In this video, I'll be covering the Lumix G7 for church live streaming and recordings. Hello guys, my name is Sam from Live Production Tips and Tools and today I'll be talking about the Lumix G7 for church live streaming and recordings. I'll talk about settings that you need for live streaming and recording. I'll cover some accessories that you may need to be able to start live streaming or recording depending on your setup. So stick around and let's go. Before we start, I have to mention that my friend just bought this camera for his church and I was so honored to be able to test it for him before he can start using it. I was able to take it out in, you know, an outside environment, um, take some footage with it, experiment with different lenses and different scenarios. I took it to my church as well and I used it to film some stuff, you know, uh, our sermon, um, but also try to do some live recording with it in my home office. So I'm gonna pull all the footage that I took outside in a church environment with different lenses at the end of this video so you guys can see what it looks like. I have to mention that in general, I really, really love this camera, especially if you are on a budget. Even though most of us don't need to record in 4K or live stream in 4K, this camera can still record up to 4K. Not only you can use this camera to live stream or record your services, you can also use it to take some stills or pictures for anything you want, okay? I would suggest you maybe before you start taking pictures with it to uh, invest in a small flashlight. You know, you can find something on Amazon for 50 or $60 that you can use and this will give you good looking pictures for your church events and any other stuff, okay? This camera costs only 650 US dollars or about 800 Canadian dollars, which is really cheap considering the fact that this camera comes with two lenses, the first being a wide angle lens, 14 to 42 mm, and the second one being a more like a close-up lens, which is a 45 to 150 zoom lens, okay? So think about it, for all the money, for only 650 US dollars, you're getting the camera and two lenses, and out of the box, it comes with a battery, everything ready to start recording and live streaming. So let's talk about the settings that you need for live streaming. When you live streaming, you connect your camera through HDMI to your computer. At this point, you do not have an option to color grade or color correct your image coming from the camera. What you send is what you get. The most important thing is to be able to color grade or color correct your image in the camera and now i am going to give you my best settings for this camera to make sure the image coming out of the camera has enough color contrast and saturation so the first thing you need to do is to adjust your white balance okay so depending on where you're filming usually let's say if you're filming outside uh, the colors the light is different from filming inside so it's important every time you change the environment to go to your camera settings and change your white balance all right guys so make sure you have a white card um something could be a white sheet or anything that is white okay turn on your camera okay and uh, make sure it's on um, m uh, or movie okay on this dial go to this button white balance or wb press it you have different options as you can see you have auto white balance uh, this is if you want the camera to choose the balance for you uh, to choose the white balance for you uh, you have sunlight you have like so many different options here but all you uh, what you want you want to do your custom white balance to just make sure it's it's precise okay so you go to custom one or custom two either way it will work okay and um you and you select select white set okay and you make sure your white sheet is well lit and make sure it's within the yellow square okay and once you're ready 
click set and it's completed okay so your white balance now is adjusted okay the next thing uh, is how you control your exposure okay now you will see that your camera will not give you an option to control your your aperture so to be able to do that um, you need to go to menu and uh, go to exposure mode and uh, click uh, choose M okay so once you do that you go back now you have an option as you can see this is your aperture value so this is your aperture that you can control with the front dial and uh, your shutter speed that you can control here okay and your um your iso that you can easily control by pressing this button okay so let's start with your iso your ISO, you want to make sure uh, you keep it at um, maximum uh, 800. Okay, so all you have to do is click this ISO button here. Okay, and you dial using the front dial, uh, go down to 800. Okay, don't go over 800 because uh, as soon as you hit 1600 and 3200, you start seeing some noise okay so try to keep it 800 uh, or under if you could do 400 it's even better or 200 okay so let's put to 800 for now okay and your shutter speed um it's, it's gonna depend on uh let's say if you're shooting in 60 frames uh, 60 frames per second usually uh, you need to double that so you do 125 if you're shooting 30 frames per second then you need to keep it at um, um, 60 so you always do double of your um, your frame rate okay uh, we're gonna see the frame rate uh, after this um, your aperture also would depend on the lens that you're using uh, but usually i always because um, the the lower you go um the blurry background you'll be able to get so i uh, always keep it the lowest so with this lens i can go up to 3.5 so i'm gonna keep it at 3.5 you can use uh you can control it by using the front dial okay let's go over my live streaming settings okay so for so for live stream um i don't really change that much okay uh, i like my live streams to be 60 frames per second because the reason being the fact that uh it's always uh i've seen a lot of people when they are live streaming when they do some movements or there's motion uh in the video you see the video is kind of choppy okay so i always go here record quality and uh, click choose full hd 60 frames per second okay my record format i always keep it at mp4 and the most important thing that i'm going to change will be my photo style because i want to be able to kind of color grade like give give it some color contrast um you know right in the camera okay because you don't have that option um to edit before you push to live stream so you live so you want to make sure everything is is, is is done in within the camera okay so instead of using natural i use uh standard so i use standard profile okay and what i'm gonna do i'm gonna go to contrast i add a little bit of contrast i put a one you can put a two if you want but i keep a one uh, plus one and my sharpness i always uh, try to reduce uh, my sharpness i keep to minus two okay because i want the image to be a little smooth um and i keep my noise reduction at plus two 
and my saturation this camera is already saturated so i i trying to keep it at plus one okay uh and that gives me something an image that is kind of okay and watchable and has color and contrast you don't want to put too much because if you put too much contrast and color it's not gonna it's gonna look unreal so you you want to avoid that kind of thing okay again this just these are just my settings you can always go ahead and you know kind of try to play with it experiment with it and see the results you get depending on your situation always remember to adjust your white balance never forget that okay so once you're done you you click set and you ready to go okay so as you can see once you're done you can see whenever you're filming or live streaming you see everything you got standard uh you live streaming 60 frames per second okay you can see your iso here you can see your shutter speed so now for this we're going to put our shutter speed at 125 so our shutter speed is going to be 125 because we're shooting at 60 frames per second and our aperture stays the lowest you can get from the lens okay now keep in mind this uh the shutter speed can always change okay if you put it at 80 or 100 or 80 it's no big deal you can always play with it but don't go too low because as soon as you go like 40 50 then the image is not smooth it starts to be you adding more light but the image starts to be uh, a little choppy especially if there's some movements i see a lot of people make that mistake trying to push the the shutter speed down to like 20 30 like it's gonna start looking bad okay the last thing i want to talk about is how you get a clean hdmi out okay because once when you're streaming you once you connect your hdmi cable you may see uh on your picture all this information you know see if i click display everything is gone but you see this line so to be able to get uh, a clean hdmi out uh also you need to just one second you need to go to menu okay and go down here to to the third option okay and so you see the clock set go down here go to tv connection okay and um once you reach tv connection click to uh this tv aspect ratio keep it at 16 by 9 hdmi mode play auto hdmi info display so if you put this on your hdmi is going to have some information like you know oh it's not gonna be clean okay so you want to go to hdmi info display and um choose off okay and then in this way it's going to give you a clean hdmi so now that you have seen the settings for live streaming i'm going to talk about the settings for recording okay so keep in mind this is really subjective it depends on what you want to do you may decide to record in full hd 1080 or you may decide to record in 4k so this will depend on what you want to do okay i'm just going to show you the settings that i used and the results that i got just to give you an idea of what it looks like uh with those particular settings so for my uh, recording settings usually uh go to menu okay go to photo style i choose natural because they do color grading when I'm editing. So I want my picture to be as flat as possible. This is my contrast, okay? I put my contrast all the way to minus five, okay? So I don't want any contrast <clears throat> at all. You can have it at minus four or minus five. It doesn't really matter, but I, I keep it down as down as possible because I want my picture to be as flat as possible um also sharpness 
uh, I keep I keep it around minus one okay so you can see you can change it here so I keep my sharpness at minus one and noise reduction I keep it at minus one as well and saturation I take it down to minus four uh, the reason being is when I tested this camera it tends to give me a more saturated image and uh, I was trying to avoid it especially because I have that option to kind of you know add my own saturation during post-production or editing so basically that's it once you're done you click set so let's go to menu and go to the first page of the movie mode and let's scroll down to record format okay so i use mp4 as my record format i never use the av avc hd uh personally i've tried it and um I uh, always had issues with Adobe Premiere so mp4 does the job and gives me nice uh, files uh, that I can easily edit without any problem so keep it at mp4 and if you go here uh, to record quality um, that's where if you click here uh, it's gonna give you options for if you want to shoot in 4k uh, 30 frames per second if you want to shoot 4k 24 frames per second okay but for my recordings i usually keep at um, um, full hd 60 frames per second okay so this is the one i use okay if you want you can do 30 frames per second sometimes i do 30 frames per second but if i want they say if you want to slow down your footage afterwards for some slow-mo or if you want like a smooth experience uh where you want the image to be smooth and you have some motion in it 60 frames per second is always good okay but you can still do 30 frames per second it doesn't matter either this these two should work for a church environment or church service okay so let's keep it at 30 frames per second for now so now that we have seen the basic settings let's talk about the accessories that you will need to use with this camera the first thing you need obviously with any camera you need lenses and this camera as i mentioned in the beginning of this video it comes with two lenses these two lenses are great they can help you get started with what you need okay but i have to mention most churches tend to dim their lights during worship and these lenses may not be that great for low light situations now if you have that kind of situation where church tend to dim lights during worship you may consider investing in a lens that will perform better in low light situation like this mikey lens that i got from amazon this is a 25 mm lens and it's not a wide angle lens it's more like a portrait lens it can perform well in low light because its maximum aperture is 1.8 if you don't understand what it means it basically means that the lens is going to allow more light into the camera making the image look better and sharper but i also have to mention that the this lens will give you an effect where you see a blurry background and the main subject in focus you can use this lens to film more like if you're filming the sermon or your worship service but you want to focus more like on one or two people maximum because this lens is not made for capturing a lot of people in a frame so i want you guys to take a look it's a uh, it's a small lens it's uh, made by a company called uh mikey uh i tested it myself i'm gonna show you some footage that i took with it in a church environment and outside uh it looks good i didn't have any issue with it the material is good uh it's so smooth and nice it's very small and light and uh, i'm sure you'll be happy with the results uh what you can get from this uh, lens okay so apart from this small lens you still have this lens that came with the camera plus this one that will help you to capture wide angle so i'm gonna show you the footage that i took with all the three lenses and you guys are going to compare see 
uh, the differences and uh, what you get from each lens and you going to make a choice for yourself okay the next accessory that you may need for this camera is a power adapter that actually works with this dummy battery that will help you connect the Lumix G7 to power okay keep in mind this camera comes with one battery and if you live streaming for two hours or three hours or the whole service depending on how long your service will last this battery may not hold okay so to be at ease and make sure you're covered you need this uh ac power adapter i'll put a link down below so you guys can go get it from amazon plus this dummy battery and i'm gonna show you how it works so basically this is what you get is a normal power adapter and a dummy battery that you will connect to your power adapter like this very simple okay that you connect to your power adapter and this looks like a battery this is a lumix g7 battery kind of so what you're gonna do is you're going to remove the actual battery from the camera and put this dummy battery into the camera okay and make sure it clicks and you put it the right way and the best feature that i liked about this camera is actually they have a little way out here it's like a door a small door that they left for you to pass the cable through okay because i've seen some cameras where when you use this uh dummy battery it's like you need to leave the the door open okay but for this camera you don't have to you close it like this and lock it okay and if you can see my cable i have a small door out that the cable is still coming out okay and all you have to do is to take this end and plug into your power outlet okay and you're good to go the next accessory that you need is an sd card 64 gig or 120 gig just you know just to make sure you you have enough space if you're recording 4k you never run out of cards okay the third accessory that i recommend is getting a tripod okay so it's important that you get a tripod and i'm gonna give you a link down below for for you guys to you know get a nice tripod that will help you get going the fourth accessory that you will need is an hdmi cable okay so you're gonna need an hdmi cable coming from your camera to the capture card to be able to send the image to your computer where you'll be live streaming from so i recommend something not more than 50 feet actually this is the hdmi cable that i got for my friend it's only 40 feet uh if you're interested you can buy something like this but you don't have to exactly buy the same thing so depending on the distance uh, you need to know the distance from the camera where the camera is gonna be to where you're gonna be streaming uh to where you're gonna be live streaming from uh let's say to your audio booth and this is where you're going to plug your hdmi cable this camera uses micro hdmi so you can either get an hdmi that has one end micro hdmi to a full size hdmi or you can simply buy a regular full size two ends hdmi and actually invest in a small adapter that will adapt your camera hdmi from micro to full size hdmi the next thing you need is a capture card okay it could be something more complex like this or it could be just a small capture card like the elgato um, that will only help you get the hdmi to your computer with only one with only one input but for this atm menu from black magic this is a switcher uh that will that will be able to take up to four cameras and as you can see it has up to four inputs and you'll be able to plug your camera here plug your computer for lyrics or any kind of presentation that you may have for your church plug another camera in input three and input four if you have three or four cameras depending on how many cameras that you have send everything out from the switcher to your computer so basically this is going to be uh the middleman between your camera and your computer to be able to live stream so the way to connect your camera to your computer or obs is by as i said earlier you need the hdmi cable that will come from your camera and goes to a switcher or a capture card and then from your capture card your capture card should have a usb uh, cable or output that will go to your computer as soon as you open obs 
and you go to input video input you'll be able to choose the capture card as an input in obs and you'll be ready to go live streaming or recording if you live streaming your service with this camera how do you get your sound synced with the image to be able to live stream everything all together the best way to get your sound for live streaming is to get it from your mixing board where every instrument is plugged to all the microphones are plugged to and send one feed out to your switcher or your capture card so this may be challenging and hard for some people depending on the capture card they're using okay for the purpose of this video i'm not going to go into details however in my next video when i'll be reviewing capture card slash switcher i'll talk more about how you can get the sound from your mixer to your atm mini combine it with the image coming from the camera and send everything together to obs for live streaming now that you have an idea of how this camera works for your recordings and live stream i hope i have given you enough information to get started i am going to show you the footage that i took outside with different lenses and enjoy the show guys thank you so much for watching this video i appreciate you hanging out with me if you have questions please put in the comments down below i'll be happy to help you with anything if you like this video please consider subscribing to my channel and if you hate it please let me know so i can improve thank you guys and i'll see you on my next video